could live a thousand lives and never see the end of
Good morning. Welcome to Woods Chapel Church. My name is Jacob Stansberry. I'm the Family Ministry Director here at our Lee Summit campus, and we are so, so, so excited that you're joining us for worship, whether you're in person or online. Uh, there's a couple things we want you to do this morning for us. If you can text the word CONNECT to 816-688-3353, uh, you can, you'll get a link back. You can fill out a connect card. Give us any prayer requests that you have, which would be super helpful for us um, to better serve and care for your family. Um, the other thing you can do is text the word bulletin to that number. Again, it's 816-688-3353. Uh, if you were watching online, the links to both of those things should be put in the chat for you as well. Uh, and I just want everyone to know uh, that tonight at 6 o'clock is our annual charge conference. Um, it's going to be on Zoom this year, so what you can do is go to the website, woodschapelchurch.org, click on forms at the top, and find the form that's titled Heartland District Charge Conference, uh, and you can sign up that way. You'll get the link, you'll get all the paperwork, all that sort of thing. If you have questions about that, feel free to stop by the hub uh, right outside these doors uh, after service. Let's pray. God, thank you for... Um, the opportunity to, to come together after a week that didn't see much coming together. Um, God, whether this was a week that, that ended up being a good one for us or a week that, that we're a little disappointed about, God, we just pray that you would meet us in this place. That God, the, the songs that we sing, the prayers that we pray, the, the message that Robin's gonna give, that all of it would, would encourage us, it would challenge us, it would draw us closer to you. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, amen. It's good to see everybody. Welcome. Would you please stand up and join us? Your will, your way, it will be my joy 
keep worshiping together this morning, would you? Well, 
a good morning, everyone. It's so good to see your faces. What a beautiful day in November that we're going to have. So it's fantastic. And we've had two great weekends in a row. And last weekend, we actually had all of our family in, our kids in, because uh, our youngest daughter, she turned 21 on Halloween. So we had a great time celebrating. And you know, uh, and, and also this week, we had another birthday, Jake, my husband, he turned to age that shall not be named. But Friday night, when all the kids came in, I had planned, I was going to cook like this huge sit down meal. and We'd all just, you know, enjoy that together. But, but then I changed my mind because I didn't want to miss out on the conversation. You know, I, I didn't want to miss out on, you know, all of the updates and the the debriefings of what's been going on in their life. So I made several appetizers, and I actually made two awesome recipes. That I got off TikTok. I love some TikTok recipes. They are fantastic. One was this cheese dip with chorizo. Oh, my goodness. It was so good. Um, the other were some chicken wings, uh, and then I made a, just kind of a tried-and-true buffalo chicken dip. I mean, doesn't that sound good? That was so yummo. After we ate it, we were all like, oh my gosh, I can't move. And it's like somebody just pour a glass of water down my throat, you know, kind of salty. It was, I was a little thirsty after that. But those appetizers, man, I'm telling you, what I loved about it is I was able to throw them together before everybody got there. And so then when we were ready, I just popped them in the oven and we could, it was, so it was just kind of nice to sit around and catch up and not worry about all of the details that go into a big meal. And I got to say, I just love those times around the table with family and friends. Um, so my name is Robin Miller, and I am my lead pastor here at Witch Chapel. And just want to welcome all of you in the room this morning and those who are joining us online. And we've been talking about the table and how the table has just long been a place of, of gathering for friends and for family and for food. And, and we've talked about how Jesus had what I would call as a table ministry. All right, and what I mean by that is Jesus would use the table, uh, he would use mealtime, if you will, as a time to, to nurture and to care for and to build relationships with people. He was very intentional about that. And, and, and so, and, but what's happened now, it seems like somewhere along the way in our culture, as we've become busier and, and we've put more on our plates, no pun intended, but we kind of lost sight in many ways of some of those table traditions and how the table has been that place for Christian community to, to gather. And so today, you know, instead of meals, oftentimes our tables hold piles of, of mail, <laughs> right? Or, or our instead of, uh, instead of uh, maintaining a place in our homes, the table kind of becomes the place where homework uh, is carried out. But there is something really, really special about the table and, and the stories that it holds, and the relationships that take place. And so we're really using this time in this series. We're, we're using it to kind of reclaim that table. And so today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk, I'm going to spend a little bit of time in Luke's gospel. Because Luke's gospel is so cool. And Jesus, in Luke's gospel, he actually uh, uses food in about 70% of his parables. Um, so Jesus had food on the mind, eating on the mind when in that, uh, in that book at least. And one theologian even said that when you look in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is either sitting at the table or going to a meal or coming from a meal. Uh, it seems like most of the time. So in other words, he was sitting at a table a lot with his friends, with, his, uh, with those that he invited to sit with him. And it was a primary, a primary way that he related to and he cared for other people. So, so I'm going to take a closer look at one of uh, the stories in Luke, specifically in chapter 10. And, you know, just like us, 
I mean, Jesus had friends, right? And three of his more famous friends, one was a, a guy named Lazarus, <clears throat> who's pretty famous. And then Lazarus' sisters, uh, there were Mary and Martha. All right, so we're going to read about them. So I'm going to go ahead and turn. This is, again, chapter 10 in the Gospel of Luke. And on verse 38, it starts out, it says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, so they were on their way somewhere, on their way to a table, on their way to a meal most likely, he comes to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Now, I'm going to just stop there for just a second because what the gospel tells us, what Luke says, is that Martha opened her home to Jesus. So, in other words, Martha was the hostess with the mostest, right? She was like, yeah, Jesus, come on in. It's good to see you. Haven't uh, spent much time in a while. Now, the ver there's a verb there. When she opened her home to him, it's a Greek word, and the word is Hupadecami. Hupadecami. Okay? In fact, I want you to say it with me. I got the phonetic spelling. Hupadecami. Hupa, hupadecami. Right? Very, you're bilingual. Awesome. Good job. It cost me $35,000 in seminary to learn that word. You get it for free. So there you go. But hupadecami. I mean, isn't that a fun word to say? I like a hupadecami. It reminds me of basketball or something. But hupadecami, what that Greek verb means, it means to receive. Right, to receive in, to welcome in, to entertain someone as a guest. So Martha, she uh, offered this, this hupadecami to Jesus. She wanted him to come in and spend some time with them. And interestingly, this is the same word, hupadecami, is the same Greek word that is used when, like Zacchaeus, when he invites Jesus over to his house for dinner. And, and it's the same word that uh, is used when Jason welcomes Paul and his party in Thessalonica. And, and James talks about how Rahab in the Old Testament uh, welcomed the Hebrew spies into her house. So again, that same word, so this idea of, of opening up and welcoming in. And that's what Martha has done. She's opened her home to Jesus. And so she's working really hard. She, she's working to make the meal that everyone is going to share around the table. And then what we learned was Mary is kind of sitting back chewing the theological fat with Jesus. Right? So Martha's doing all the work. Mary is sitting there listening. So question... How many of you have siblings? Mm -hmm. Okay, many of you. Or maybe you have kids, more than one kid. So there's some sibling stuff going on. Yeah, I see that right there. So can you imagine how this might work out? <laughs> Where this might be going? Two siblings, actually three of them. One's working, the other isn't. Well, let's read, shall we? Let's see how this goes down. In verse 40, so they're sitting there. Jesus has come in. Martha's working on the meal. Mary's sitting there at the feet of Jesus. And in verse 40 it says, But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that she had made. You know, so she's worried, well, I got the chicken dip, and I got the chorizo, I got that brand, you know, so I got to make sure I got all of this going on. So she's got a lot of details. And she came to Jesus and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Tell her to help me. I need some help in this. So basically what happens here is Martha's getting chapped because she's doing all the work while Mary's just sitting there. She's, she's not doing anything in Martha's mind. Martha, in her invitation, in her hupadecami kind of attitude to Jesus, she, I mean, she is showing great hospitality, right? I mean, that's really important, and, but she's having to focus on the meal and all of the details. You're like, do I use a tablespoon or a teaspoon of sugar? I'm not sure. Is this salted, unsalted butter? You know, we're running out of milk. And all of that is frustrating her. And so she complains to Jesus about it. <laughs> and, and my guess is she's probably a little more than surprised when Jesus actually takes the side 
of Mary. All right, so let's read where that takes place in verse 41. This is Jesus responding. He goes, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. And Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So Jesus sides with Mary in all of this. I'm sure that upset Martha. And when I would read that, it remind, do you remember um, two other sisters that kind of fought a lot? Do you remember Jan and Marsha Brady on the Brady Bunch? Do you remember them? There was that one episode where Jan was mad at Marsha because Marsha got all the attention and she cried. She was like, Marsha, 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 right? And so I hear that, and I couldn't help but think when I read the words of Jesus, Martha, 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 you know, what is wrong? You're so distracted. You need to only worry about one thing. Your sister has chosen so much better in this situation. And the problem with Martha, it, it, it's not that she's busy serving and, and providing hospitality. I mean, not only was hospitality a huge part of the culture of that day, but, but Jesus also wants his followers to offer that friendly hospitality, to show that kind of service to your neighbors. In fact, the, the story of the Good Samaritan, which is a story all about hospitality, that story comes immediately before this story of Mary and Martha. So hospitality is a really big deal. But the problem with Martha is, is not in her serving so much, but rather that she's become worried and distracted by it. And that word distracted, when it's translated from the Greek in verse 40, it's a word called paris pau. Paris pow. So everybody say that word with me too. It's like Paris pow, okay? Paris pow. When you become distracted, go home with your husband or your spouse or your best friend. And if you get distracted, say, I'm so Paris powed. And you will, you know, you will amaze your friends with that word. So Martha, she's being distracted. She's being Paris powed. And she's worried about all of these details. And it leaves her no room for the most important aspect of hospitality which is gracious attention to her guest. Right? In fact, I mean, she actually breaks the most important rules of hospitality by trying to embarrass her sister and, and uh, asking her guest to kind of intervene on her behalf. She's like, Jesus, can you not deal with this? I mean, you're the son of God. I mean, can't you do, there's a miracle to make her get up or do something. I mean, can you not help? And then she even goes so far to almost accuse Jesus of not caring. She's like, Lord, do you not even care? I'm working so hard here. So Martha's worry and her distraction, it not only prevents her from being truly present with her guest, with Jesus, <laughs> I mean, it also causes her to drive this wedge between her sister and herself and between Jesus and herself. I mean, she missed out on the one thing truly needed for hospitality. And folks, there is no greater hospitality than listening to your guests. Do you hear me? This is so important. And, and actually, it bears repeating. I want to say this again. Because when it comes to you know, reclaiming the table, when it comes to reclaiming that place where relationships are nurtured, where relationships are cared for, a place where we can grow in our knowledge and understanding of one another, the greatest hospitality that we can offer to someone we have invited into our home is, is not you know, necessarily the best cooked meal or the most spotless list of living rooms or even the most expensive bottle of wine, the best hospitality that we can offer is to simply listen. 
And especially if Jesus is sitting at your table, right? You listen. We can listen and we can be present in the moment with our guests at the table. And what Jesus wanted Martha to hear, actually what you know, Mary was uh, so good at listening to, and, and what Jesus wants us to know is that all are welcome at his table. Everyone is welcome there, at, you know, where he sits. And, and he wants us to hear that and embrace this idea that, you know, we need to love God with all that we are, heart, mind, soul, strength. We need to love God and we need to love our neighbor just like we love ourselves. And, and we need to do things like pray for our enemies and love our enemies, not try to get revenge. But this is a table where that can be built, where that can be nurtured, where enemies can turn into friends. And, and, and what if, and, and what if, at this table, what if what we hear is a rebuke to Martha? What if it's actually an invitation? Martha, Martha, you're so distracted by so much, but really there is only one thing that you need. Don't worry about the bread. Don't worry about the olives. Don't worry about the wine. Just sit and listen and be present with me. And let me show you how God is. You know, in a culture that just values the busyness over being still and present, let me say this again. There is no greater hospitality that you can offer to someone than to just simply listen. And let me confess, as your pastor, this is not something I do well with. You can ask that man in the back. I think he would affirm that. Because I'm, I'm a lot like Martha. I want to get involved in the details. I love to cook. I love to chop and to saute and to uh, grill. And so sometimes I become more in, uh, I just gathered in by those details than I do with the people who have come to sit with me. And that's why this weekend, this past weekend, I tried to do something different because I wanted to spend time with my kids. I wanted to hear what was going on in their lives. I wanted to share the stories. I wanted to be a part of the conversation, not a part of what was necessarily happening in the kitchen. But that takes intentionality on my part. <laughs> so, you know... Um, Last week, Pastor Brian, he asked you to think about, you know, who should be at your table, right? We talked about how God invites all to his table, and so there was the challenge that went out to us of, like, who should be here? Who can we invite? Who's that uninvited guest that maybe we can invite to be in our sphere of influence in some way. And so now when you think about that and you're thinking about who you want to invite to your table, I want you to take it one step further and think about how you're going to offer the hospitality of listening when they show up. Right? I want, to th I want you to think about how I'm going to ask questions and then actually wait for the answers that they're going to give you. And I want you to turn off the TV. I want you to turn off your phones. Maybe you actually just start that process with your families. How about we leave our phones in another room as we come to the table to have dinner? Amen? How about we turn the TV off as we sit down and have a meal together with one another? So we've got a little tool that we have placed on seats as you came in. These are little placemats. Um, it's something we want you to take home, something you can use every single day. And we would love you to, to see, we'd love you to start using it to see if you can kind of use this as a way to gather, to have conversation, maybe even for Thanksgiving in a few weeks. You know, we got that big holiday coming up. 
And you probably figured out what I want you to do. We want you to use this as a way to maybe start some conversation. Maybe it'll help spark some of those questions, and then you can listen for the answers. They're fun questions. You're like, what was your favorite grade in school? And who was your favorite teacher and why? It's amazing what you can learn about somebody, even in your close family, that maybe you didn't know before. When you ask these simple questions... I mean, this can be a chance for you to start doing some memory making, memory making that we actually like versus the memory making that sometimes happens around the Thanksgiving table. I mean, that would be a miracle, wouldn't it? If politics didn't come up at Thanksgiving, well, this is a way we can stop that. Um, Maybe talk about something else. And so use these questions that are on the placemat in the tables in your life. Take these home with you if you need more copies. We've got plenty at the hub. But it's a way to not only invite others to our table, but then to extend the hospitality of listening. And remember, anyone, everyone is welcome at Jesus' table. I mean, that's our vision here at Woods Chapel, right? This, this idea that we are included and accepted and loved and that anyone can be a part of a transforming community. So who's filling up your table? Who are you inviting? And, 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 and do we actually live into that included and accepted and loved that hangs on the sides of our church walls? It's time for us to get creative and to use our God-given gifts to open up spots at our tables for people who need it. And again, for this week, make the commitment that you're not going to turn on your TV, you're going to leave your phone in another room, you're going to talk, and you're going to listen. Because there is no greater hospitality than just listening. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for the son that you sent to us to show us who you are and what you're like, to show us the grace that you offer day in and day out, to remind us that you love us all and that you invite us all to your table. We get to be a part of the feast That you provide. So God as we gather with your children. Whether it's people that we are related to. Or friends that maybe we've known for a long time. Or maybe it's someone we're having a Zoom meal with. That we haven't talked to in a few weeks. Or even months. Help us to extend that hospitality. Of asking questions like how are you. And what's been going on in your life. And then just simply listening. Thank you for listening to us. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. what
might be aware that we have been in the middle of our giving campaign and time of year as we make our commitments for 2021. Um, and I've just been humbled by your response. I, I'm so thankful for a church family that understands why we are here, that we are here to be uh, in our community, to be loving our neighbor, and to be there to be an offer of hope for those who need it most. <laughs> and so much has changed in the last nine, ten months, but not the church. In terms of its mission and its, its determination to reach out and to help others and to be that source of light and hope in a world that desperately needs it, that has not changed. And so for those of you who have given toward that, I'm so thankful for your faithfulness, your generosity, 
If you've not been able to turn that commitment card in yet, there's still time. Um, We would love for you to be a part of what we want to do in 2021, to be a light to people who need to see that. So this is a time that we go deeper in our spirituality through our giving. You're going to see the different ways that you can offer your gifts to God. There's baskets that you'll see on the way out if you've brought your uh, gift to give in. You can turn in your connecting card there, or um, not your connecting card. Well, you can turn that in too, but or your um, commitment card is what I meant. But we just we're very thankful for the generosity of the folks that call Woods Chapel home. Thank you. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Here at Woods Chapel, we are dedicated to continuing the mission Jesus laid before us. And for us, that starts right here in our community. We seek opportunities to serve Lee Summit in Jackson County in any way we can in order to spread the love and the hope of Jesus. Recently, we received word about a family from St. Paul United Methodist Church in Joplin, Missouri, whose premature twins were at Children's Mercy Hospital here in Jackson County. And as a result of social restrictions and our stay-at-home orders, the family just wasn't able to receive normal resources and support from the Ronald McDonald House. Their home church wasn't able to fully support them because of the distance regulations. And so Woods Chapel Mission Team and the Congregational Care Meal Team were able to offer meals, snacks, and other resources to them while the family was in the hotel. The results were overwhelming as an abundance of food and other resources were offered up. The family has expressed immense gratitude for the powerful outpouring toward their comfort. And now, They're back home in Joplin, Missouri. What a great reminder of God's unceasing care. Even in the midst of great chaos and confusion, the Lord just doesn't allow his people to go without provision. He makes a way when there is no way. Isaiah 40, 11 says, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep and their young. It's stories like these about God's provision that we love to share. So if you're looking for a place to serve or to give back, please consider Woods Chapel Church. We are here for Jackson County. What a great day to be in the presence of God and you find folks. Would you stand up and join us for one more? Why? 
with that song, won't you? Thank you all for just helping us worship God this morning. This is what it's all about. We're here, and what appropriate song to sing today, eh? Amen. I love it. So don't forget, take your placemats. Use this as a way to have conversation. Use these questions. Make up your own. Just listen. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.